Hello, welcome to my channel, Cat's Diamond Painting, or welcome back if you've joined me here before. Today, it is coming up to the end of June. It's the 29th today. And I thought that it would be fun to do a kind of mid-year review, where I'm up to, what I've done recently, and what I'm working on. So I thought I would look at the things I've done in kind of quarter two of 2022. So April to June. So the first thing I'm going to do is really, really quickly show you the pieces that I've completed this quarter. Um, I have post reviews for all of these up on the channel, so I'm not going to dwell on them. I'm just going to whiz through them and show you. And if there's any that you'd like to know a bit more about, there will be a video on it on my channel. The main thing I wanted to do today was to show you what are my whips. So to show you my works in progress for the end of June and what I will be taking forward and hopefully finishing in the next quarter. So the first piece that I completed this quarter, and this really was right at the start of the quarter, I looked it up and it was April the 1st, <laughs> is La Porta Rossa Sulla Salita by Dreamer Designs. And you can see the piece here, it is absolutely stunning. It's an 80 by 60 centimetre piece. It was chock-a-block full of confetti. So it did take me quite a while, but I think the finished piece is just stunning. So that was my first finish this quarter. The next piece is in Santorini. So this one I also finished in April. It's a fairly small one. It was 61 by 46 centimetres and it had round diamonds. So this one went quite quickly. Lots of colour blocking in the sky. Uh, smaller areas that were quite confetti filled. This one was so peaceful and relaxing with all the blues and these kind of muted lilac -y cream colours over in the buildings. It was a really nice one to work on. After in Santorini, I moved to Island Time. I say moved to, if you've watched my channel before, you'll probably have heard me explain. I actually moved back and forth between paintings. Sorry, just picking off a hair there. <laughs> Um, so I'll work on a couple of rows of one painting, then I'll switch to another. And that's the way that I keep diamond painting fresh for me is switching between different paintings with different styles, different shape drills, different colours, that kind of thing. So this was Island Time by Diamond Art Club. It's a Chuck Pinson piece of art originally, and it was 74 by 55 centimetres and square drills. This one was so vibrant. Tons of ABs, Aurora Borealis drills, all these greeny bits in the trees, loads of ABs there, and, and then accents throughout it as well. I really, really enjoyed this piece. I mean, I say that for all my paintings, I do enjoy all of them because it, 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 how do you not enjoy working on pieces of art like this? Um, but yeah, this one was super fun. And then the last finish that I have in quarter two, um, is Zoom Zoom. So I just finished this one last week. There is a post review up on the channel and a de-kitting, kitting down video. So if you're interested, go check that out. This was another Diamond Art Club. You can see that I do a lot of their paintings because I just, I love the quality and I love the art that they have. So this one was round drills. It was the newer round drills that Diamond Art Club offers. So they were fabulous quality, not much trash at all. And I really enjoy the way that these newer ones sparkle. It's a little more subtle than the older drills, um, but it's really shimmery and pretty. Okay, so those are all my finishes for this quarter. Shall we have a look at what I'm still working on? Okay, so the first of my works in progress for the end of June is one that I actually started way back at the start of the year in January. I don't work on this one very often, I've got to be honest, so it's making really slow progress. And because this is a double-sided adhesive canvas um, and you can't see the picture, I'm going to put a picture of the original artwork up on the screen now. So that's what this one looks like. And if you're familiar with the way these things work, um, it's not a licensed piece of art. I bought this way back at the start of my diamond painting journey, probably early June last year. 
and I didn't know all about how that worked yet and I saw this art and I really wanted to go for it and I also really wanted to try Ever Moment which is the AliExpress store that this one's from. They have a reputation for being really good quality. Sorry about the clicking noises in the background there, that was my cat coming back in. <laughs> um, so let's have a look. Okay. So, as I say, it's not licensed art, which is something that I tend to try to avoid buying these days, but I already have this, so I'm not gonna not work on it. Um, and Ever Moment quality really is excellent, I have to say. Because this is one I bought a long time ago, it's double-sided adhesive, which means that the actual glue that you're working on, um, it's basically just a sheet of double-sided sticky tape layered over it. It's not poured glue, which a lot of other companies like Diamond Art Club, Dreamers Designs, and loads of others now use, uh, which is where they just pour the glue over. And poured glue canvases are a lot more forgiving to work with. Double hide, double hided, double sided adhesive canvases. You can have issues with the glue. But Xander, sorry, <laughs> I might have to shut the cat out in a minute. That was him attacking my other paintings. Um, so double sided adhesive, you can have issues with what's called rivers in the glue. So you have to be really careful with how you handle the canvas. If you kind of bend it around things and that kind of thing, you, you can cause real issues with it. Um, and if you get rivers, they're like bubbles of, of air that pop up in the glue. And if you don't deal with those by kind of scratching them with a knife, you'll get your drills popping up and not laying flat. So it's, it's just, it's fine, I don't mind working on double-sided adhesive, but it's better with smaller paintings because I work on an easel, so this painting is really right at the limit size-wise of what I can handle on my easel. And it's still kind of hanging off the edges and bending around corners a bit, and that's not great for the glue. So it's a 50 by 70 centimetre painting. Um, what I will say on the positive side is that the drills are absolutely fabulous. They fit together so well. There's no popping whatsoever, even though they fit really snugly and they're ever so shiny. So I'm really happy with that. They are nice to work with when I do it. On the flip side, I don't know. I'm still not very far into the painting as you can see. So maybe this is gonna turn out beautifully. To me, what I've done so far looks a little bit blurry and pixelated. It probably comes out a little bit better in the viewfinder than it does for me. And that's that's fine because diamond paintings are, are supposed to be viewed from a distance. I'm a little bit on the fence about how this is going to turn out. Considering it's a 50 by 70, I feel like that probably should be enough to get the detail in this piece of art. Um, and I'm not sure whether it's just a rendering style because it's all a little kind of muddy if you like um or whether I'm just being premature and it's it's gonna turn out great they don't put rendering pictures on their shop you can I discovered after buying this uh message them and they'll send you a computer rendered picture of how each size that you can buy will work out but it's not that easy to figure out what size to get with them if you do want to buy from Ever Moment, please be aware that they do not license their artwork. So if you spot art on there that you recognise as being current art that other shops sell, it they will not have a license for that. Quality wise though, they're great. And they do poured glue now as standard instead of the double-sided adhesive. So that would deal with a lot of the issues that I've had. Okay, let's move on to my next whip. Okay, so I thought I'd kind of go in the order that I started working on these, which brings me to this one next. This is The Old Waterway Cottage by Dreamer Designs. You can see the canvas is kind of trying to pull up a little bit, uh, just because I've had this rolled up in a box while I've been having a break from working on it. So as I say, this is by Dreamer Designs. It's got their trademark kind of fairly stiff, very substantial canvas, and it's poured glue. This one, 
I sort of have mixed feelings about it at the moment. I absolutely love the piece of art. Dominic Davison, the original artist, because this is licensed art, I think he's one of my favourite artists out there. I just, I love his use of light in pictures and it, it seems to fit diamond painting really well because a couple of companies have his pieces and they just, they always turn out beautiful. So I love the piece. Let me pull this back so you can get a clearer shot of the bit I've worked on, in fact. Um, Dreamer Designs have a bit of a reputation for high confetti pieces and that's, part their style largely the pieces of art they choose I suppose and that's the thing I go for those pieces of art because I like those really detailed pieces I, I'm I'm not one for um for pieces with huge color blocking it's been quite intense on this one so I've done I think that's three rows so where I've done one row put it aside come back to it done another row put it aside come back to it it takes me a few days just to do one row because if you can see what's going on here, it is just so, so filled with confetti. And I always try to explain these terms. If you don't know what I mean by confetti, I mean in any one small area of the painting, you might be changing the colour you're working on lots and lots of times, um, switching out between different colours to really get that detail in there. So it's not a criticism of Dreamer Designs, it's, it reflects the piece of art that needs that kind of detail. And I don't mind confetti, but I suppose I am finding this one a little bit intense, which has been the case with the other Dreamer Designs pieces that I've worked on as well. So maybe I just need to change what I'm ordering. Most likely it's just that it's harder going at the start for me when I've got loads still to go um and then as I get further into the piece I kind of get more into it and I'm you know really going with the flow of, of that piece of art it would help if so much of it wasn't green <laughs> which is again just a reflection of the original art which will be beautiful when it's finished there's not a lot they can do about that but there are I mean there's got to be I mean there's 67 colors in it I'd say somewhere between 10 and 15 of those are shades of green. So you can be working on a section and, and changing colour, changing colour, changing colour, going really slowly. And then at the end of it, it's, it's all just green. <laughs> I think I will be absolutely fed up with the colour green by the time I finish this piece. But I do love it, as I say. I'm, I'm going to come back to it soon, do another strip, and I'll keep chipping away at it like that. And then by the time I've got a good way through it, I know that I'll just have more momentum going and it'll be easier to finish it off. Ignore my strips of release paper here. I've found that it's best when I'm working in rows. So I'll have a row of release paper where I'm working and then this thin row of release paper as a kind of buffer zone so that when I'm working on my easel, the cover can come to here and I'm working on the section below it. I found that if I take these off, when I'm rolling the canvas up and putting it away, often the plastic cover can get really stuck down to the canvas and I start to worry I can't pull it off. I think what that is, is where there's, you know, fingerprints, bits of oil and, and dirt that I can't see on the release paper because I've reused it or maybe when my fingers have touched the canvas or anything like that, the glue and that, it, it doesn't mix so well. <laughs> so rather than worry about the plastic cover getting permanently stuck down, I tend to just leave this on now. And this will come off absolutely fine. Other comments about this? Um, gosh, it's getting really dark in here. Let me put some light on. Hopefully that's a bit better. I know there'll be a bit of glare now off the plastic cover. Um, so Dreamer Designs, hopefully you can see there, the canvases um, tend to be not the absolute clearest you'll work on. Um, because it's like a kind of woven thick canvas, you can have a sort of grainy effect. Um, it's fine, it's absolutely fine and I've worked on far worse. A little tip if you're working on a canvas like this and you're struggling, if you normally use a light pad, turn that right down or turn it off and put an overhead light on instead. And that can really help when working with this kind of canvas. It's not at all a problem if you haven't worked on companies 
like Diamond Art Club that do this really crystal clear drill field. You might not even notice anything. For me, that's just a little something that I have to get used to if I switch between them. Right, moving on. Okay, my next work in progress is fresh from my easel because I've been working on this yesterday. Really super enjoying this one at the moment and working on it a lot. So it's still rolled around my foam roller and I deliberately left it on there to show you so that I can give you an example of how I manage with paintings like this on an easel. I have this rolled around a foam roller. I got this one with a Dreamer Designs kit. Otherwise you can get things like this in, in craft shops and the like. And that's how I handle large paintings. I wrap the completed portion around that, have that at the bottom of my easel, and then I've got a manageable amount to work on. Okay, so this is how this one is looking. I'll just pull this down a moment so you can see the top of the picture in case you're not familiar with the art. So you can see the whole design of this is based around these really fun little owls. <laughs> it's the family circus with, I guess, the mum and dad, Big Owl, and their four little kids. Um, and that just, it resonated with me because I'm one of four kids. <laughs> so I'm trying to work out which of these little owls is me and which is my siblings. <laughs> I'm really, really enjoying this one. So it's a newer painting from Diamond Art Club. It came out in April. It's been really popular. So it's, it's out of stock at the moment. You can sign up and get notifications when it comes back into stock if you would like to buy it. It has their newer drills, which all have the same amount of facets on the top. Let's see if I can show you. So it gives you this really uniform effect. And they also have very little trash. There's not much that I have to chuck away at all. And they fit together very, very snugly. So that makes it very enjoyable and satisfying to work on. If you're kind of intimidated about squares, but like a, a lot of people I know think that they're going to be harder than rounds if they haven't tried them yet. One like this could be really good to work with because they fit together so snugly that as long as you're careful where you place them, they're not really going to be crooked. So you can just take your time to place them really carefully in the squares and then they're going to straighten each other out because they've, there's no room for one to stay crooked and the others around it to be straight, if you see what I mean. The downside to that is that I've had very minor trouble with popping drills, which I've never had before with a Diamond Art Club, before they changed to the newer drills and tightened the grid so that they'd be close fitting. They're not really popping in the sense that I think it's just where I haven't quite placed one down properly and haven't noticed. Um, and then if I run my hand over the canvas after I finished on a section, I might feel one sticking up a bit, push it down and then they're not coming back up again. So it's not really a popping drill thing, but it's just something to be aware of because if I didn't check over it, there would be some that would ultimately fall off because they hadn't been stuck down properly. It's got 64 colours and they're really varied so you have these nice sort of muted pastel-y colours in the background and then everything in the centre is bright and cheerful and colourful. There's five AB drills, five Aurora Borealis drills with a special coating so that means there's lots of really nice shiny bits like like this flower here that is all yellow ABs and it's a really good mix of colour blocking and confetti which you might not think of to look at it because it looks quite bitty I think in some areas but this middle section you've got some big blocks of colour and all the outer sections they're not huge blocks of one colour which I don't like anyway but there are sections where you, you can really get your multi-placer working. So overall, this is probably the most fun I have ever had with a diamond painting. And I kind of don't want it to be over. It looks like I'm about 
well coming up to about halfway through so yeah this is one which will be really exciting to finish but also kind of really sad to finish and not have it to work on anymore Diamond Art Club has brought out one other piece by the same artist, Richard Lorenz. Um, it came out a few weeks ago, sold out straight away. So again, if you like this kind of style of art, you can sign up for notifications when it comes back. Not sure that one's quite so much my cup of tea, but I will definitely be watching out to see if they get any more pieces by this artist because I absolutely love this. Last but not least, we have Wheatfields by Van Gogh, and this is a Diamond Dots canvas. So this one I haven't done so much of, as you can see. Um, I started this quite recently uh, as an entry into the summer with the Masters event. It runs through June and July. You can look it up on the channels of Diamonds and Washi or Tiny Worlds of Wonder if you're interested. And it's basically focusing on older pieces of art that predate... 1927 I think is the cut off year now and they're pieces that don't have to be licensed so you can if there's a really old painting that you like just get a custom made of it and you're not breaching any licensing conditions this one was a ready-made canvas from diamond dots and yeah so <laughs> oh my goodness I've just noticed now there's a section there that I've missed Oof, I'll have to go and do that now because that's kind of losing a bit of sticky um it's one that I kind of haven't got into yet, as you can see, I've done this one row and then I've not got any more done. For a small painting with only 30 colours, it's just, it's very, very confetti heavy. But more than that, it's the same sort of colours over and over, kind of like I was saying with Old Waterway Cottage, you know. It's not just confetti, but you're changing from one really bright, vibrant colour to another. It's like a whole load of yellow, a whole load of blue, a whole load of green. <laughs> and not a huge amount else it's fine I will crack on with it soon I'll chip away at it one row at a time and once I've done a couple more rows I'll be halfway through and I know it will feel a lot more manageable to finish right now I'm just not fancying pulling this one out as often as others um so yeah I'm working on family circus at the moment once I've done an another row or two of that I'm probably gonna crack on with this and get another row done positive points so that's that's all me really and just my preferences and tastes and what I feel like at the moment. None of that is a reflection on Diamond Dots or the kit itself. So when I think about those things, it's I mean the quality of Diamond Dots drills is excellent. I had a lot of trouble kitting this one up um, because of static in the drills. So I do have a kitting up video. <laughs> if you want to watch a woman struggling with drill static for like an hour, then <laughs> that's available on my channel. But once I dealt with that, the drills themselves are just so shiny and beautiful. I don't know how well it's coming out on the camera, but Diamond Dots drills are like absolutely peak drills. They're really nicely faceted. So they've got, you know, clearly defined facets on the top and they just, they catch the light beautifully. Not very much trash. So they're really easy and satisfying to work with. The canvas itself, sort of a little bit like what I was saying with Dreamer Designs, I suppose. It's another of these kind of quite thick woven canvases. And the printing can, in places, be a tiny bit grainy. That's me being really fussy just because I've worked with some companies where it's crystal clear because really you know there is nothing wrong with this canvas it is not hard to read the symbols um for me at least it's it's just a kind of a note that it's a little bit different so those are my four whips that I'm taking forward into quarter three of 2022 I hope to get all of these finished this quarter I would say or at least most of them. Um, I would predict that I'll definitely get Family Circus done <laughs> um, and get at least one of this or Old Waterway Cottage finish, depending on what I get into and when. The other moment, it's just that's a really slow burn one. Uh, because of the difficulties that I have managing the double-sided adhesive on my easel, 
I tend to not be able to get it into a really comfortable position. So then I get a bit of neck strain. So yeah, I don't tend to work on that one very often. And then I just do a small section and put it away again. So that one's probably going to be rumbling on for months and months yet. But the rest of them, I hope to make some good progress, get a few of them finished, and then I'll start thinking about what to kit up next because I've got some really beautiful paintings waiting in my cupboard that I'm so excited to do. So I hope that you've enjoyed this today. If you have, drop a like on the video. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Um, and I will be back soon with more diamond painting fun. Bye!